it's time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. In the cloak of night, she takes her stand, a warrior maiden with blade in hand. From the shadows, she emerges bold, a secret agent, fearless and cold. With grace, she moves, a silent wraith, in pursuit of creatures of myth and faith. Her mission clear, her resolve unwavering. Against the supernatural, she is unfaltering. Through ancient ruins and haunted halls, she battles beasts that lurk and crawl. With cunning mind and heart of steel, she fights for truth with nerves of teal. A guardian of realms beyond our ken, she faces darkness time and again. In a secret war twixt light and night, she stands as a beacon, fierce and bright. I am an agent of a secret society, my future ad 3485. But leave me alone, I just wish that they could leave me alone. Once I belonged to a secret society that hid the world's worst monsters, and no, I'm not talking about the SCP agency. They're a joke compared to us. They simply contain, not stop, the monsters. I'm Agent Iceheart, named so for my chilly personality. Maybe once I was warmer, but not after what I've experienced. Now looking at me, one would not think that I'm capable of fighting off people's worst nightmares, but my five foot seven hourglass figure could kick your ass to China if I deem it necessary. My glasses would probably make one think that I sit in some bullshit office typing away on some fancy computer. Now, uh, alas, my computer skills are strongly lacking, unlike my field skills. I'm here to tell you some of my worst cases, and how I got to where I am. My first job was perhaps the most memorable one to this date, but not the worst. It was a snowy day up in the mountain range in the middle of nowhere. The only town was one hundreds of miles away. You see, my partner Hothead and I were seeking a wendigo that was eating every lost hiker in the area. Yeah, laugh it out now. Hothead and Iceheart seemed like an odd pairing of agents, but then again opposites seemed to work better on the field. Hothead has saved my butt many times in training, more than I'd like to admit to him. Hey, I... I heard there's a cave system deep in the mountains, Hothead stated calmly, adjusting his thick black winter coat. Uh, try not to get yourself killed, okay? I'm not paid to be a babysitter. My brow raised at his sarcasm, and I was brimming beneath my frozen skin. One would think that the thickest coat in the world would work, and yet the arctic level winds made me feel as if I was naked. Tall naked trees mixed with towering evergreens surrounded us. Yeah, yeah, I blew him off, waving my heavily gloved hand in his direction. His deep green eyes glowed in my direction, a small smirk curling at the corner of his kissable lips. We couldn't date since we were partners, some bullshit about how it would complicate things. Snowflakes floated around us, making my mood worse. The trees shifted ever so slightly, the woods growing quiet. Uh, if you should learn one thing from me, never trust when nature goes quiet. That only means something bad is coming our way. Hey, hothead. My voice called, even though I was silent. I need your help. Hothead stiffened, straining his ears for the general direction of it. Hearing my voice, but almost robotic, threw me off of my game. And the air around us grew colder, dropping a good twenty degrees. Even he started shivering next to me, worrying me just a bit. A small boy in tattered winter clothes stumbled out of the woods, sending off mixed signals. Now, part of me wanted to help him, but part of me was naturally very wary. Help me, the boy whispered, staring into my copper eyes. Help me, miss. It's got me. My left foot stepped forward, but strong hands held me back. Before he could explain, branches fell on our heads, knocking us out. 
dull throbbing greeted my head. Cold grey rocks stabbed into my back. Hothead stirred next to me, a scowl instantly forming on his face. His forehead vein throbbed angrily, a true sign of his irritation. Rough ropes cut into my wrist, small pieces of rope clinging to my coat. Yes, we found ourselves inside a cave, our hands bound. Ah, oh, why didn't you do what was said in the training? He groaned through gritted teeth. Did you even learn a damn thing in your training? Before I could respond in spitting fury, a group of what I could only describe as mangled up men deer clipped and clopped in front of us. Ice formed underneath every footstep, creeping closer and closer towards us. You humans will never learn, a gravelly voice growled, the biggest one stepping forward. If you're looking for the missing hikers, well, here they stand. His bony fingers motioned behind him, hungry red eyes boring into mine. A lump formed in my throat as hundreds more stepped forward, while well, even Hothead's eyes widened in alarm. Cool, I retorted coolly, trying to hide the fear in my voice. Well, I do have one question, though. What makes you the leader of them all? Do they all vote you in or something? And just because you're the biggest doesn't make you the leader. Small people can rule, too. His twisted antler scraped the wall, rotten breath oozing from his lips. Each step was another explosion shaking the ground beneath his feet. Hothead glared at me, his fingers wrapped tightly around his hatchet. Whispers passed in the crowd, steadily growing louder. His face was inches from mine now, his breath so rotten I thought I was going to die. Bony hands pulled him back just as my partner got free. Oh, maybe you are useful after all, he mused playfully, soaring at my ropes. Let's get that spirit bomb ready. Nodding, I leapt up to my feet. My boots echoed in the cave, running while setting the bomb up. He cussed while shooting special bullets into the dark. Well, maybe you are useful after all. He mused playfully, soaring at the ropes holding my hands. Now let's get that spirit bomb ready. Nodding, I leapt up to my feet. My boots echoing in the cave running while setting the bomb up. He cussed while shooting special bullets into the dark. Howls and screams of death echoed behind us, probably being one of the most unnatural sounds in the world. While well, relief washed over me, the blue, shining bomb was ready to go. Moonlight shone in through a small exit, showing us a way out. Icy rocks pressed against our bodies as we squeezed through the hole just big enough for us. I'd obliterate, I yelled, tossing the quivering ball of blue light back into the crack. The blue light flooded the system, wiping every single one of the blasted creatures away. Rumbling grumbled above our heads, snow threatening to come off of the mountain. With each boom, the snow grew looser and looser. Thunderlight booms now erupted above us, the snow sliding down. And the puttering of a helicopter jerked us awake from our trance. Snow flooded around us as he pulled me into the safety of the copter. And only white sparkled as we flew away, the trees and bushes now all gone. Bard 2 oh, Witches annoy me, always casting spells under their rotten breath. Now let me start by being very clear in saying that I only strongly dislike the evil ones who curse entire towns. Nope, witches aren't all green and warty, as is known. In fact, they look just like us, parading around as natural healers. Most of the mumbo-jumbo is still unbelievable in my eyes. Well, that was until we had to take down a coven of witches. So, here's that story. Hmm. You look nice, Hothead teased, childlike joy glittering in his eyes. Maybe you should have always been a waitress in a diner. Rolling my eyes, my shaking hand smoothed out the tight pink uniform, 
cheap, musty motel room walls caving in on me. A rough black carpet crunched beneath my white tennis shoes, cheap red bedding glaring back at me. I still don't see why you couldn't have been sent in as the cook, I whined softly, tying a starched white apron around my small waist. God, I do all the hard work. This was only partially true. For the last few cases, my ass had been tossed around worse than a salad in a salad spinner. A snide smirk curled across his lips, making my heart skip a beat. Oh, stop it, now was not the time. Grunting roughly, he ran his fingers through his hair. Uh, I get to look like the lowly customer, he groaned, rubbing his forehead. If anyone knows anything about me, it's you. I hate casual. A soft chuckle tumbled from my lips then, a small smile dancing across my face. He did look rather odd in his blue novelty t-shirt and worn jeans. Worn dad sneakers made it almost more comical than I looked. His cheeks flushed red, anxiety flickering intensely in his eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I brushed him off, flipping my hair. Well, I'm going to be late, lowly customer. Crossing his arms, he sat back in the cheap black leather chair, motioning towards the garish gold door. This motel room had no theme, and certainly a lack of discernible taste. Ah, go get him, he called as the bright morning sun blinded my eyes. Making a vise with my hand, my shoes reluctantly trudged forward towards the final mission. Now, did I tell you how much I hate customer service? Decaying buildings lied on each side of me, telling me a depressing story. Eventually, a silver train car sat in front of me, alive with old and young people alike. You coming in or what? A fake red-headed woman hollered out of the front door. You are late as it is. A pink uniform clung tightly to her slightly chubby body, perhaps from eating one too many meals here. Sighing, my feet pounded against the cracked pavement towards her. For just a moment, her eyes were purple. I mean, a deep purple. Yeah, she certainly was a witch. However, her aura was not negative or evil. <clears throat> Sorry, I murmured, my head down towards the cracks underneath my feet. It won't happen again. A serious look filled her now green eyes, her red bob bouncing around. Clearing her throat, she waved me in. Fifties music exploded into my fragile ears then. Pink booths sat all around me. Listen, it's not me, she whispered, maple syrup in her breath. Now, Roy is more of a stickler for the rules than I am. I'm Darlene, by the way, and you are? Shit, I forgot my cover name. Racking my brain, relief washed over me. Oh, Susie, uh, Susie Baker. I replied with a warm smile. They always fell for the warm smile, just a moth drawn to the flame. Disappointment burned in a short man's eyes, his dress shoes clicking faster and faster. Huffing and puffing, he stopped directly in front of me. Alarm widened my eyes, his going completely black. Susie, what did I tell you about being on time? He chided, annoyed beyond belief. I expect you to respect my rules. Nodding, he sauntered away, brushing an elderly gentleman's shoulder. White mist curled off of his shoulders, his soul departing. How long did you say this place was open? I inquired warmly, brushing her shoulder. She had no soul. God, just what was this demon doing here? Before I could ask another question, though, the bell clanged. My partner sauntered in and plopped down at the counter. The worn pink stool squealed in protest, Susie approaching him. Steam floated out of the black mug, brown liquid pouring from a clear coffee carafe. He took a sip, but spit it out right away. Excuse me? A blonde waitress called me over with the most plastic smile. Are you doing anything tonight? God, your energy is amazing. Mustering up the best smile I could, a small nervous laugh tumbled from my lips. 
her painted lips tilted into a crooked grin, her green eyes glittering happily. Just for a moment, they flashed that same deep purple color. Strangely enough, though, she still had her soul. Well, I'd love a night on the town, I excitedly answered, gauging her reaction. Her sharp little tongue licked her lips, creeping me out ever so slightly. Well, the day dragged. Coffee was poured. Large portions sat on beat-up plates, people growing ever further into a hypnotic state. Groaning, my tired fingers untied my filthy apron. Ah, the tip sucked today, leaving little to no money. Are you ready to go, girl? The blonde-haired waitress inquired bubbly. I have a change of clothes in the car. Hothead was sat in his car, watching my every move. Blinking twice, I signaled to him that I was heading out with her. He simply nodded and started the engine. Pop music exploded from the beat stereo in the older black car. With a childish giggle, she tossed me a black lace cocktail dress. Black silk itched my sensitive skin as it slid over my head. Oh, Hothead would have loved me in this. Dirty thoughts flitting through my mind. Pine trees flashed by the window, us going further into the dark woods. Blue moonlight bathed a rather large clearing in front of us. A cloaked figure stood in a round circle holding hands. Hmm. Horror widened my eyes at the sight of a small girl in the middle. Rusty chains hugged her tiny wrists, Sleep slumber embracing her small body. Hmm, you want to see something cool? She queried playfully, twisting her hair. Well, I'm a part of this cult, and it's so much fun. Tears welled up in my eyes, biting my tongue, getting harder. When doing my tight bun, my hair collapsed halfway down my back. A large lump formed in my throat, my mind racing for a plan. Hothead was the one who was excellent with the plans, not me. Right, just play along, no matter what. Hey, um, why is a child in the middle of the circle? I asked, fearing the answer. Is what you're doing safe? A small girl stirred awake then, her body freezing with fright. The metal of the chains rattled, screams pouring from her lips. Whatever is wrong with this scene, she mused, tossing me a heavy black cloak. We're sacrificing the lamb to keep our youth. Struggling not to freak out at this stage, a peculiar look darkened my face. A figure pulled me aside and slammed me into a tree. The hood fell around their shoulder then, revealing Darlene. Her brows furrowed and a scowl formed on her lips. I took you for better than this, she hissed, looking round. They're going to kill that child, and I'm going to stop them. Well, I guess that made two of us. Sighing, my hands searched around for my badge. Gold flashed in her eyes then, her body relaxing. Hey, you help me out here, and I'll let you walk out of this. I promised, praying she wasn't playing me for a fool. Much to my surprise, she shook my hand. Glammy sweat dripped onto mine, grossing me out. Hey, um, is she one of them? Hothead questioned, making us both jump out of our skin. You're supposed to be prepared for anything, little rabbit. A sly grin slid across her wide face, her eyebrow cocking. Hothead looked at her oddly, merely wondering what was going through her head. Well, not to pry or anything, she mused, playing with her chin. Um, are you two an item or something? Both of our faces flushed scarlet, quick exchanges passing between us. Clearing my throat, a loud boom erupted in front of us. The diner owner stepped forward in some type of red armor, his skin now as inky as the night. Red flames licked at him, 
but not penetrating his skin. Right. We have to do something now, or that kid is toast, Hothead retorted coolly, brushing off her comment. Right. Do you have the magic neutralizer on hand? Relief washed over me, the glowing iron pin laying in my palm. Chanting then rose from the circle, hiding the girl's screams. Dirt flew in my face, him slamming the pin in the ground. Suppress and take it all away, I ordered quietly, watching a navy blue energy cover the forest floor. Silence took over the energetic air, the figures turning towards us. Panic arose in my frazzled mind, Darlene collapsing in a heap next to me. Anger boiled in my veins. Her pulse was gone. Damn it, I actually liked her. Tears welled up in my eyes again, despair clawing to climb out. The cloaked figures rushed at us, a faint blue glow appearing at the girl's side. While amazement dropped my jaw to the ground, Darlene's bloody spirit was helping her escape. Right. We need to kill that demon, he muttered, staring in awe. Oh, this will just happen again. The little girl took off into the woods, the demon following after her. Breathing deeply, a solid resolution came to my mind. Right, you take them, and I'll take him down, I announced firmly, gritting my teeth. I'll make sure that that girl gets home safe. Sadness dimmed his eyes, his lips parting in protest. Dirt crunched underneath my feet. My fingers wrapping around a special demon knife. Its skeleton handle nestled nicely in my palm, ready to play. Two miles in, the girl sat in a fetal position, rocking back and forth. Dirt and mud clung to her red hair, my heart sinking at the realization. This was Darlene's little sister, Tears falling from her eyes, and snot hung precariously to the dirt, fear striking my body. Well, something was off here, really off. Black fog crept in, the demon stepping out into the moonlight. His armor looked purple due to the two colors mixing. A large black sword sat in his right hand, my knife suddenly feeling like a useless tool. Sharp teeth dripping in red blood grinned at me, his black boots clicking closer to me. Mm, you are a witch, aren't you? He pondered out loud. Nice spell. Let me guess. Magic black iron pin is the tool of choice. Right. Well, I have a deal. Become my bride, and she goes free. Eyebrow cocking. My body lunged forward at him. A flash of red later, and I was on the ground. Oh, my muscles screamed, his shoe smashing me into a tree. Cracks echoed in the still air, my ribs breaking. One bone fragment jammed into my lung, making breathing rather difficult. Oh, go to hell, I wheezed, struggling to my feet. Confidence oozed on his face him not realizing what I'd just done. My body would heal, but probably not the trauma. At this, the little girl sprinted in the other direction, leaving just him and me. Growls erupted from his black lips, a snake-like tongue flicking in and out. Oh, this demon definitely disturbed me more than the other ones had. Well, you are being used by a demon yourself. He groaned, lifting me up in the air. He's using you, little witch. Shockwaves of pain crashed through my body then, his sword sliding easily into my stomach. Crazed red eyes glared into mine, gauging my reaction. Strength stood strong in my face, though. It was not moving from my anger. Blood dripped onto the slick grass, a sick grin spreading on my face. Blood spurted all over his armor, the sword making a sickening sound on its way out. Now, I don't care who you are, 
The wet sound of a weapon coming out of you is the worst you can imagine. Probably a good thing that I hadn't eaten that day. Symbols glowed on my arm, confusion twisting on his black face. Thank you for the energy, I mused, ignoring the hole in my stomach. Grunts poured from his lips, my foot meeting his cheek. Cracks filled the air, his body crashing into a tall pine tree. What are you? He wheezed, coughing up black blood. Fear then appeared in his eyes for the first time. Shrill rings tormented my head, my glowing fingers ripping his heart out of his chest. It thumped and thumped until it crumbled in my hand. The air in the forest lightened up then, the girl sneaking out of the woods. What are you? She wept, stepping back in fear. I could hardly blame her. I mean, I scared myself. The marks faded, the pain of my wounds smacking me in my face. Spitting up blood, nonetheless a soft smile brightened my face. I... I'm a witch of energy, I wheezed, propping myself against the tree. I won't hurt you. Tears welled up in my eyes, the agony stabbing me all over again. She hopped over, concern flashing across her face. Are you going to be okay? She questioned, fresh tears forming in her beautiful eyes. Please don't die. I already lost my sister. My chest ached. Soft chuckles attempting to come out. A necklace sparkled in the moonlight, just to my right. Picking it up, a sapphire necklace spun in the gentle breeze in the night. Darlene's energy came rushing into me, showing me what the truth was. Oh, God, if you aren't dead yet, I will personally do it myself. Hothead threatened, his voice laced with concern yet relief washed over him, seeing me alive. That relief soon melted to fear at the sight of the blood pouring underneath me. <laughs> I'm fine, I whispered, trying to stand up. I have just one last thing to do. The necklace became a blur of silver and blue, a white light emitting from it. Seconds later, the light had died, and it floated over to the girl, clasping around her neck. A small hand wrapped tightly around the gem, tears flooding from her eyes. And what I could guess was warmth enveloped me when her arms wrapped around my neck. Unsure of what to do, I simply patted her back. Right, go into town and call the cops, Hothead ordered, pulling her off of me. Don't worry, we'll be gone. Her bare feet scampered away from us then, only stopping to look at us once. Owls hooted in the trees, fury contorting his face. Jeez, what is up your ass? I wheezed, his arms picking me up. I told you I could handle it. Shaking his head, he looked deeply into my eyes. Oh, you don't get it, he shouted, his words echoing around us. I love you, damn it. I thought I'd lost you. Look, I get that you're a witch and all that. But I can't stand to lose you. Let's just quit and run away together. My eyes widened at his omission and suggestion. Oh, he did like me back, but, well, I couldn't risk any connection just in case that bit me in the ass again. Okay, I love you too, I whispered, taking in his woodsy smell. But agents can't date other agents. Snorting. He looked up into the blue moonlight. Slumping forward, he rolled his eyes. The urge to kiss him was strong, very strong indeed. Look, I have reason to believe that they have a plan, and it has to do with you. He explained quietly, looking around. They insisted on finding you. Shifting uncomfortably, pain shot through my body. Just then shouts erupted around us, an electric shock knocking me out. Part 3 
Now we're at the beginning of how I started out. Oh, and how I hated being a witch of energy at this particular moment. Trust was definitely gone between the secret society and I. This is why I never opened up or worked with a group before. More importantly, he betrayed me by finding me. Goddamn Agent Hothead. Grey icy stones dug into my back. Glowing chains gripped my wrists. Oh, great. Now energy suppressors were my new bracelets. Yeah, I am sorry. He apologized through a small hole next to my filthy face. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. Rolling my eyes, a long sigh exhaled from my lips. Anger and distrust ran wildly through my veins, poisoning my mood further. <sighs> Just save it, I spat, looking at the heavy black iron door in front of me. Oh, I wish I'd never met you. You're just another one of their stupid monkeys. His chains shifted uncomfortably, my grey sweatsuit feeling itchy against my skin. Tears welled up in my eyes. The silver moon lighting up my five-by-five five cell. Oh, good way to stifle energy even further. Alarm filled my eyes, a dark shadow flying by my barred window, the figure holding its finger to its non-existent lips. Commotion erupted outside of my cell, the door flying open. An older gentleman with grey slick back hair stood in front of me in a dusty red suit. Light illuminated from the key in his fingers, the key clicking. The chains then fell to the floor, relief washing over me. Well, daggers could have shot from my eyes the moment my partner stepped into my view. A nervous smile curled on his lips, hope bleeding from his eyes. Come along, my darling daughter, the strange man said as he offered me his hand. We have some work to do. The moment my hand touched his, the scene melted into an underground bunker of some sorts. White metallic walls with many rivets blinded me in the bright lights hanging above me. Cracked concrete felt cold on my bare feet, basic chairs lining the walls. Where, where am I? I demanded oddly, taking in my surroundings. My lips parted to speak, long arms wrapped around me. The smell of woods and cinnamon floated up my nose, melting my muscles. This was the scent of my childhood, long since raised by the secret society. Looking up, I saw copper eyes staring down into mine. Remember me, little rocket? He mused, patting my head. Oh, I missed you so much. He let go then, my mind struggling just to remember him. A confused look contorted my face, a frown dimming my expression. My cheeks burned red, frustration burning in my eyes. Biting my lips, a taste of copper slowly filled my mouth. A pregnant pause hung between us, nervous glancing between him and me. Hothead then walked in, and I launched myself at him. His strong body thudded to the ground, fear wild in his eyes. Why is he here? I growled, holding him to the concrete. He is a bloody traitor. He struggled beneath me, the stranger peeling me off of him. Clearing his throat, he stumbled to his feet. Adjusting his suit, his eyebrow cocked in an annoyed manner. I was the person who called him, you nut, he blurted out, stepping back. You are welcome, by the way. He glared at me. His arms crossed. Slender hands then grabbed my shoulders, my hands starting to slap them away. Intense pressure pressed down on my shoulders, long black hair falling across them. I suggest you stop, little sis, she threatened, gripping my shoulders even tighter. Shut up and listen, you little shit. Spinning around, my jaw fell to the ground. A carbon copy of me was stood there, except for the dyed hair, that is. Unable to take it anymore, my bare feet pounded against the rough concrete into the nearest closet. All darkness granted me instant relief. 
Slamming it shut, the lock clicked. Pairs of shoes thundered outside of the door, then hushed whispers. One timid knock jerked me out of my mind's wandering. Look, I don't know how, but we can get all of your memories back, Hothead explained gently, trying to hold back his tongue. But it's stored in a chip that slips back into the slit in your neck. At this, horror paralyzed my muscles, a small slit laying underneath my quaking fingers. But does that, well, does that mean you know who I am? I inquired shakily, a large lump forming in my throat. An oppressive silence hung in the air, not one person saying a word. Taking a deep breath, I stumbled to my feet. The lock clicked open, anxious people waiting earnestly on the other side. Worry was flashed across all of their eyes, grim frowns all around. Well, um, I don't, but I know that I like you, Hothead admitted sheepishly, glancing at the largest crack in the floor. Well, it's something most people agree to when they join in the cause. However, I felt that I didn't really have a choice. They often order the children of the parents that they rescued to be the next set of agents in place of money that they uh, don't have. Disgust burned in my eyes, that foul taste of copper hitting my taste buds. Damn it. I was biting my cheek again without realizing it. Look, we have to bring them down. I uttered, stroking my chin. And then I get my memories back. His arms wrapped around mine, warmth flowing through my body. Then he pulled back, his hand lifting up my chin. His lips pressed against mine hungrily, and the time melted away. Pulling back, our faces were flushed scarlet. Red lights started to flash, the trap door bouncing up and down. Come out with your hands up, a gruff male voice ordered. Don't make me do it the hard way. Our bodies stiffened up, glances passing between us. My dad and my sister nodded to each other, their hands pressing to the ground. Some kind of Latin words poured from her lips, a strange circle of marks glowing underneath our feet. The door burst open, men in black armor hurrying down the ladder. Large guns sat on their shoulders, a tall muscular man stepping forward. His dark green suit had not one speck of dust on it. Metals dripped down the heavy coat. Alarm widened in my eyes, noting the energy starting up in his hand. A small black ball spun around, and a dull blue glow steadily grew stronger. A soft humming sound was getting louder, causing me a migraine. The blue energy exploded slowly, and a white wall of energy spun around me. Closing my eyes shut in terror, a whooshing sound was ringing in my ears. Energy slapped my body, humming through every vein in me. Shock opened my eyes as the energy poured from my fingers. Blinking once, a sea of black trees and red ground greeted my tired eyes. Ravens gathered in front of me, red eyes blinking back at me. Oh, where are we? I stammered, backing into a twisted dead tree. My brain wanted me to run, but my heart told me to stay. A small prick pinched my neck, the trees spinning around me, sweet darkness embracing me. Let her go, a younger version of my dad called out to a cloaked stranger. Earthquake. The ground quaked beneath me then, the pine trees crashing down all around me. Black fire shot from his palm, narrowly hitting the bottom of the cloak. Oh, the person hissed, ice putting out the black flames. Sharp wails rang out in the hot, sticky summer air, an older version of me sprinting towards the kidnapper. A skeletal hand pressed against her heart, ice taking over her body. Moments later, ice had encapsulated her whole body, her dagger splitting it into pieces. Hot tears fell down my cheeks, my father crying out in the night. 
jerking awake, my head slammed into a dark piece of wood. It was dark except for a single black flame in the center of the room. No one was around, leaving me alone with my sad thoughts. A black rose ring glistened in the flames, begging for me to put it on. I was about to when my dad stopped me out of nowhere. A cold sweat dripped down my forehead, pinging my bangs down. That is the black rose of death, he explained, wrapping his arms around me. That's what turned the leader of your previous organization. He was once my friend. Oh, did I tell you how much I hate other witches? Giggling to myself, a warm smile curled on my lips. Hey, let's go get some food, I said, switching the subject. I nodded. We went to do just that. Part 4 A sea of werewolf heads surrounded me, my father sitting next to me playing with my chocolate brown hair. The red lace dress my sister lent me felt itchy against my skin, my hands crossing each other. Black combat boots felt heavy against my feet, a bag of weapons on my shoulder. Oh, God, when I escaped them, I thought I was done with putting creatures down, I grumbled, slapping his hand away. Don't make me hate you too. A sly grin danced across his face, small fangs glittering in the moonlight. His head tilted, his black gloved hand grasping my shoulder. I know, my little rocket, he groaned, rubbing his chin, but these are monsters that they created. Miserable human beings that no longer have anything left in them. Trust me, you are doing them a service. My eyebrow cocked, my partner stepping by my side. His black suit looked simple in contrast to my father's ornate red one. Waving goodbye, a red door appeared in front of us. Looking at each other, Agent Hothead's hand turned the knob. The door swung open, a dying forest spreading endlessly in front of us. An eerie fog blanketed the root-covered ground, strange screams echoing around us. A slender man-like creature lingered in the distance, a deep voice booming. Are you here to give me your soul? The deep voice inquired coldly, a giant hand reaching for us. Oh, your buzzing energy is so enticing. I can taste the sweetness. Panic ran through my mind then, only unfamiliar weapons greeting my eyes. Oh, damn it. I didn't know what half of this shit did. A small little ball stuck out, the weapon glowing the instant it touched my palm. Tossing the ball into the air, a wave of blue energy lit up the sky. A strange hiss rang out around us, the energy exploding above us. The ground beneath my feet quaked, the voice screeching unnaturally. Bolts of blue lightning struck random spots all around us, my partner shooting me an irritated look. Didn't anybody teach you anything about those weapons? He snapped, snatching the bag away from me. Were you asleep during the training? Rolling my eyes, he tossed me two smaller scythes, a large gun sat in his palm, and the slender man creature was rushing at us now. Bullets exploded from his gun, a tentacle popping up from the ground. Suction cups stuck to my skin, the top layer popping as many teeth cut into my skin. Purple blood spurted onto my shoes, my scythe slicing his tentacle in half. What the hell is this creature? I shouted over another set of screams. It's almost like the creature is the place itself. His head cocked to the right, his gun shooting another tentacle behind me. My combat boots pounded on the hard ground away from the sea of fresh tentacles. Hothead popped up next to me, his lips parting slightly. Yeah, I think so, he said calmly, looking around. Right, let's go into that cave over there to gather our wits. His black-gloved hand dragged me into a nearby brown cave. 
the sound of water trickling, calming my nerves. Horror gripped my body then, teeth forming from the mouth of the cave. From the back of the cave, a tentacle shot out, grabbing Hothead by his heel. A screech burst one of my eardrums as my scythe sliced the tentacle, blood dripping from my ear. Leaping out of the cave, our luck turned much worse, way worse. The only way I could put it was that we were so screwed up the ass that our chances of survival were rather slim. A wall of eyes and impenetrable black skin loomed in front of us, sharp thorns shooting around us. Blue energy throbbed through my body, my hands wrapping around the black iron pin tucked in my boot. Slamming it into the ground, Hothead nodded in my direction. Absorb and dissipate, I ordered, watching the wall shrink down to one we could step over. We need to find the heart and stop it from breathing. No noise could be heard in my busted ear, an endless forest bringing a looming sense of doom. The training I had never covered any of this, and panic was running through my mind. He ran his hand through his long black hair, his gaze falling on a dilapidated cabin in the distance. Hey, um, it could be in there, he suggested, looking around anxiously. We could try to look in there. Glaring at him, the wall grew again behind us, confusion twisting his face for the first time. A wave of black energy knocked me on my ass, his strong arms tossing me over his shoulder. His breath grew short and labored, the experience taking its toll on him. My fist banged on his back, my feet kicking away. Set me down. Stop acting like I'm the heaviest person in the world, I snapped, getting more irked by the minute. I can walk, you know. He set me down in front of the decaying cabin, the rotting door swinging in the icy breeze. A lump formed in my throat, his trembling hand wrapping around mine. The worn wooden door creaked underneath our boots, the door slamming shut behind us. Alarm widened my eyes, all of the exits disappearing in front of us. Strange creaks screamed underneath us, the floor giving way. The air rushed around us, as red, fleshy walls were flashing by my eyes. A wet noise sickened me as we landed on a spongy floor. Shuddering, our feet struggled to find a stable spot, a soft pink light blinding us. A wall of eyes watched us as we shifted through the bag of weapons. Well, I believe we're on the right track, he announced, pulling out a pair of blue knives. Uh, these should do for close combat. His hand steadied as he passed me one, my trembling hands tucking my scythes in my belt. The spongy ground shifted underneath us, the rotten smell of eggs wafting up our noses. Covering our mouths, we pressed on until three tunnels taunted us. Which way should we go? I thought to myself. I see you got further than I was expecting. The booming voice from before chided, disappointment in its tone. Ah, oh, curse my tentacle. They have claimed so many souls so far. The pink light went out then, inky blackness bathing us. The blue energy in my hand only illuminated two inches in front of us, putting us at a serious disadvantage. Yeah, maybe we should... Uh, he began, my glower stopping him. Rolling my eyes, my arms were crossed against my bosom. Daggers may have shot from his eyes at that point, the vein in the middle of his forehead throbbing. Yeah, let's make the number one mistake in horror movies, I retorted sarcastically, the leather of my knife handle creaking as I gripped it harder. Where were you with all those late night movies? His head snapped in my direction, his lips pressing together. Well, at least I paid attention during training, he chastised, turning his back towards me. Oh, honestly, sometimes you're just like a bratty child. Cocking my brow, my hand raised to slap his face. His hand grabbed my arm, his arms pulling me close to his chest. 
A snarl curled on my lips, my body fighting to get away from him. At least I don't hunt down a witch and give up to a psycho organization, I screamed, a mix of tears and fury ringing in my voice. So, yeah, forgive me if I still hate you slightly. A heavy silence hung between us, his arms releasing me. Part of me was relieved, the other half disappointed. Walking down the middle, he followed after me, the pink glow warming up again. Then a rhythm shook the floor, pink heart beating twenty feet from us. A trio of the slender man creatures stepped out in front of us, each holding a spiked bat. Their clear skin freaked me out, a rainbow of organs glowing within them. Right, aim for the heart with this, he barked, tossing me a bomb with a spike in the bottom of it. Say explode, and I'll fight these monsters off. Leaping over the slender man creatures, a stretchy arm wrapped around my heel. Resistance was headstrong, my arms pulling me close enough to the heart now. Hothead hollowed out in pain, the creature screeching unnaturally as I slammed the spike into the organ. The arm flung me into the nearby wall, a defiant grin still dawning on my face, though. <sighs> Explode, I bellowed, a piercing silence bathing the scene. Hothead lay bleeding in the other corner, fright widening my eyes. Leaping over to him, my hands raised as a blue wave of energy crashed over us. Part 5 Only my eyes, a blue force field had hovered around us, the blackened forest surrounding us on all sides. Hothead was seriously injured, his arms snapped in half. My stomach flipped in circles, an ivory-sharp point sticking out of his arm. Cuts covered his skin, and a dried tentacle was sticking out of his stomach. Putting my hands down, the blue light above us was fading. <sighs> hey, kiddo. Hothead wheezed, his bloodied hands cupping my face. You did great. Large, salty tears streamed from my eyes, my teeth biting my tongue just to see if this was all true. The bitter taste of copper once again poisoned my taste buds, his eyes fluttering shut. Relief washed over me, a red door appearing in the corner of my eye. However, this bloody relief turned to paralyzing fear as men in black combat suits thundered towards our direction. Dragging his body, I hid us behind a tree. Damn, he was heavy. There was a few less donuts when we got back home, yeah? Her energy was picked up here, a gruff voice said coldly, his fingers motioning for them to find me. Yeah, she still has to be around here somewhere. Shuffling through our bag, nothing jumped out at me. Hothead stirred next to me, my finger then meeting my lips. Groggily, he noticed the men searching for us. The trunk beneath Hothead opened up, and our bodies slid down a metal tunnel. My partner cried out in pain, his body smashing into mine on this cold metal floor. Footfall rang out around us, my father coming into view then. A triumphant smile dawning on his face, though soon falling at the sight of Agent Hothead. What the hell was that? I snapped furiously, shooting a ball of energy at him. My partner's barely clinging on to life here. You dare to bear a smile? Adding my head affectionately, his hand hovered over my partner. Hothead stirred next to me, a blue light bathing his body. His chest rose up and down, my father plopping himself down next to me. That was a sea of monsters that the secret organization melded together. And those scientists, yeah, they keep doing it, he admitted. Frustration burning in his joy. It's bad enough that they killed your mother, but to do this to random people off the street. Wrapping my arms around his shoulders, his trembling hand grasped mine tightly. I see, I mumbled to myself, crossing my legs. So, what's the plan? 
Do you even want my memories back? His eyes met mine, Hothead now snoring away. His body crawled onto my lap, his head resting peacefully. Dismay dimmed my father's eyes, a frown forming on his lips. Oh, we need to storm the headquarters. I don't know about that, he half whispered, his hands crossing. That's up to you. Now, let's wake up your boyfriend so we can go home. Tapping his shoulder, Hothead's eyes fluttered open. Embarrassment flushed his face, his eyes meeting my father's. Leaping off of my lap, he stood to attention. I am uh, so sorry, sir, he stammered, smoothing out his suit. This is um, embarrassing. His hand rubbed the back of his neck, a numb look dimming his eyes. Clearing his throat, my father searched in the bag for a couple of weapons. Dust cascaded to our feet, light flooding the top of the tunnel. Well, I um, hate to be a negative Nancy, but do you know your way out of here, Dad? I complained through gritted teeth. Look, they're coming and... Hothead then dragged me further into the metal tunnels, my father following sheepishly after. The rusty metal creaked beneath our feet as they pounded down random tunnels. Harsh voices echoed in the empty hallways, with the general from before whistling a haunting tune. A wave of bad energy washed over me, light exploding from the main hall. Leaping in front of my father and partner, the wave of energy smashed directly into me. Sharp metal slid into my back, the wet noise it made nauseating me. Panic gripped Hothead's eyes, his mouth tightening with tension. Sharp pains shot through my shoulder as I peeled myself off of the shard. Now, come with me, my pet, and all will be forgiven. Oh, silly me. I am General Smith, he gloated with a cruel grin. You were meant to be my bride, after all. Hot vomit threatened to fly up my throat. Alas, it was only blood from the corner of my mouth. Soldiers in black combat uniforms gathered up behind him, large guns pointing in our direction. My breath hitched, my father stepping in front of us. Bullets rained through him, his body dropping to the ground. Crying out in pain, a sea of blue energy covered the floor. A humming noise buzzed at my feet, blue marks forming on my arm. A hot electric air blew all around my face, Lightning shooting from my fingers. His soldiers dropped down behind him, his grin growing maniacal by the second. Let us go, or you are next, I screamed, motioning for Hothead to take my father back to safety. Let's make this an electrical experience. I'm afraid that I can be rather shocking. With this, his head cocked to the left. Hothead carrying my wheezing father away from the fight. His fingers snapped, a chain shooting from his palm. The emerald green chain wrapped around my ankle, electricity gathering around my palm. The chain clanked against itself, his hand pulling me closer. Feeling around in my pocket, a leather handle slipped into my clammy palm. His face was just inches from mine now, Hot whiskey breath poisoning the air. Ah, now that I have my little bolt of lightning, I can leave, he teased, stroking my face with his other hand. Come back with me and leave the resistance. A scream of pain exploded from my lips, his finger sinking into the hole in my back. Triumph beamed in his eyes, my knife clattering to the floor. Desperation burned in my eyes now, Hothead aiming a gun in his direction. Let go of my girl, he ordered, General Smith glaring in his direction, or I will make you regret it. Sighing to myself, all I could think of was how weak of a threat that was. Cocking my brow, sickening wet noises echoed in the hall as my hand slammed into his chest. Disbelief and terror froze me, though. 
He had no heart. The general now looked down at me, winking. Yeah, I am indeed a walking meat puppet meant to serve my master only. He growled sexually in my ear. The leader of the secret society made me, and I can't die until she dies. She? Was the director a woman after all? His lips tightened with unbridled tension, a bullet blasting the chains to bits. Falling to the ground, I scrambled towards a red door that my father was standing by with unnatural strength. The door swung open, sprinting through to some form of safety was my only way out of this. Rust rained down on me, the tunnel giving way. Hothead scooped me up, my body hanging like a purse on his left arm. Oh, tired, I was so tired. Smith was chasing after me now, his voice hollering my name. A bright light blinded me, the white walls of my bedroom giving me sweet relief. How the hell are you still alive? I questioned aggressively, trying to make Hothead put me down. I don't understand. Put me down, damn it. Hothead ignored me my father's grin growing wider. He bounced up and down like a child, his hands clapping together. I got your mother's lightning, he announced proudly, spinning around. I can't believe it. Ah, it's been such a long time since I've seen it. Hothead's brows cocked, his arm gripping me tighter. Oh, this is great, but well, I almost died, I grumbled, crossing my arms. How about you go away before I shock you to death? Fear paralyzed him, his lips trembling. Bowing nervously, my father sprinted out of the room. Punching my partner's leg did nothing in terms of letting me down, though. I'll only let you down when you're done listening to what I have to say, he explained with a playful smile. I love you with all of my heart, and I won't leave you alone again. No one else matters except for you, and only you. Do you understand? I want to be your husband and father to your children, but that won't ever happen if you keep being reckless. Now, I've said it before, I don't want to be your babysitter. Well, my cheeks flushed red with embarrassment, my arms growing slack. Scratching my head, he tossed me up in the air. His kind gaze met mine as my body landed in his arms and a crooked grin danced across his face. My shoulder still bleeding all over everything. <sighs> okay, I stammered, his hand lifting up my chin. I want all of that too. Only if the world was a bit safer though. Chuckling to himself, he set me down in a chair. Random medical supplies banged against each other until he pulled out a stitching needle and a medical grade wire. Tilting his head... A mischievous grin darkened his face. Right. Your punishment for not listening is this procedure without any painkillers. He warned with a sickly sweet smile. So you better listen to me next time. Flipping him off, I let the scream of pain pour from my lips. Part 6 Awkward silence hung heavily between us. Hothead fuming next to me. Apparently he wasn't pleased that I didn't listen to him and went on a mission on my own. Rolling my eyes, our gaze never met across the oak dining room table. Honestly, it wasn't my idea, but my father wanted me to exercise my new lightning powers. The blue stone I was ordered to reprieve insulted me, Hothead getting in a screaming match with me. I know you two aren't getting along right now, but I need you two to hunt down a dark demon monster thing they created. My father ordered, slamming down a key lined with rubies. You need to stop yelling at her. I sent her out. I know you love her and all, but she won't always be by your side. Hothead's brow cocked, a sneer curled on his lips. Slamming his hands down on the table, his chest huffed and puffed. Oh, you weren't there when she broke down day after day, thinking you were dead. He screamed, spit landing on my father's face. You weren't there the day she almost died in her training. Yeah, I give a shit ton of crap, but let me tell you, I'll lay down my life for her over and over again. 
Tears streamed down his face, his body trembling. My mind wandered over to the day that training nearly killed me, his panicked voice ringing about in my ears. A lump formed in my throat, and my fists clenched tightly. In that moment I realized how much he loved me, even back then. I promised to never do anything on my own again, I uttered softly, both men looking over at me. I can't hear the way your voice was that day, never again. Hothead wrapped his arms around my shoulders then, pulling me closely to his chest. His heart was pounding away, his hand patting my head like I was a small child. Pulling back, a warm smile fell in my direction. Well, I want you to have your independence, you know, he murmured to himself, lifting up my face with his finger. I'd just feel safer if there were at least two people with you. I simply can't live without my lightning bolt. A sharp clearing of a throat jerked us out of our conversation, my father tapping his expensive shoes crankily. Okay, fine, he growled through gritted teeth. This is your disguise, and this is yours. You'll go to the witch's brew, where the creature is being kept in a cage. Can you two manage, or do you need more people of which I lack? Rolling our eyes, an iron bar door popped up in front of us. Anxiety burned rawly within my soul, dark energy meeting my feet. Two hands shoved us through, a finger snapping. Blue bits of energy glinted in the streetlight, our disguises on us. Disgust washed over my face, the ruby showgirl outfit nauseating me. Well, the gems blinded me, making the circles of skin look even paler. Blood red feathers exploded from the top of my head, my hair twisted into a sleek bun. However, his disguise was most amusing, right from the red and yellow bowling shirt to his pale feet sitting in a pair of red crocs. Chuckling out loud, a frustrated glare met my twinkling eyes. Oh, I don't understand why I have to look like a freaking tourist, he grumbled to himself, his cheeks flushing scarlet each time he looked at me. You always get to look so cute. Rolling my eyes, the bright lights blinded me on each side. Well, if you can't guess by now, Las Vegas was our current position. The showgirl outfit really should have clued you in. Who am I to judge? Tossing in my key, a chubby balding man hollered to me. Sweetheart, you're in the wrong outfit, he chastised, shoving me into a rundown dressing room. You're tonight's headline act. You're singing the song Hit the Road Jack. Put on the sparkling blue number for me. Now hurry up, you only have a few minutes. Rolling my eyes, my fingers snapped. The blue sequin dress clung to my hourglass figure, sealing my legs together. Oh, great. Now I knew how mermaids felt. A cranky man swinging the door open. Shoving me on stage, a band of fifty instruments behind me. Two women my age stood a couple of feet behind me, the band starting up. Hothead basically drooled where he was sitting, watching me sing every note perfectly. Scanning the ornate golden room, my eyes fell on the coat closet. Guests chatted away, fine evening wear distracting me as I watched a bodyguard in our former employer's uniform dart suspiciously into a secret door next to the coat room. The cheers erupted as the music died down behind me. Oh, encore! A black-haired woman with a sly smile called out, everyone turning to face her. Well, your choice, but I insist we get another song from you. A fake smile dawned on my face, but I turned to leave, only for the manager to shove me back out onto stage. The band started playing Putting on the Ritz, cold sweat dripping down my brow. A masked gentleman my height spun me around the stage, a needle shining in the stage light. Every time he tried to stick me, I dodged the needle. And people clapped, not knowing any better, the air rushing around me as he tossed me about the stage. Now... Enough was enough, the dagger in my glove slicing the dress so I could move again. Alarm widened in the dark-haired stranger's eyes, my blade discreetly swinging towards him. Spinning me around, he dangled me over the edge of the stage. Now hot-haired stirred in his seat, my head shaking, no. The assassin spun me around into his chest, the crowd starting to dance around hot-haired. Blood squirted all over me the silver of my blade glinting as it slid across the guy's neck. 
A blonde-haired lady with white silk gloves and 50s-style hair screamed, the crowd clearing out real quick. Wiping the blood off of my face, only the dark-haired woman stood still in this crazed crowd, a gun pointing at my partner. Glasses and silver crashed to the floor, water soaking the scarlet tablecloths, her attention now falling on me. Her now red eyes glowed in my direction, a bullet aimed at me. A cowering waiter in fifties clothes looked horrified, my hands wrapping around his silver drink tray. Yeah, thanks for the shield, I said to him, the bullet disintegrating the moment it touched the silver. Hey lady, how about you let us kill your little human pet in the back? Smiling to herself, she shot off another bullet, this time in the waiter's direction. Leaping in front of him, the tray caught the bullet just in time. Um, should I go? He asked dumbly, just about shitting his pants. My head tilted in disbelief, or curling a confused look on my face. How could anyone be this stupid? Um, probably. I chastised sarcastically, watching him scamper off like a rat. God, I may have lost all hope in humanity. Panic ran through my mind. The woman shooting the gun was inches from my face. Her red lipstick was messed up now, her perfect hair wild. Blood covered the white satin Marilyn Monroe dress that she was wearing, and chills ran up my spine. I am Marilyn Boone, your reaper for today. She announced herself, my foot slamming into the nearby wall. You should know better than to piss off your former bosses. Release the dog demon human thing. I'll capture you, and then we can get the machine going. Then the boss will finally love me. She squealed then like a teenage girl, a large black dog bursting through the door. I attempted to leap at it, horror paralyzing me. The woman was peeling off her face, Maggots squirming in bits of decaying muscles. Between the visual and the rotten smell, nausea slapped me in the face. Hot vomit threatened to fly up my throat, the dog ripping her off of the ground. Crunching rang out in the empty room, maggots dropping onto my face. Hot bile burned as it flew up my throat onto the ground next to me. Oh, maggots are something I never did, my hand raising to protect me. Surprise stunned me, a rough tongue licking my face. The demon-human-dog thing was a little black Scotty, cuddling in my arms. A hothead shook his head, men in combat suits surrounding us. May I have some lunch? A gruff voice begged, the dog's red eyes meeting mine. I wish to eat them all, master. Could you just cook them a bit? Rubbing my eyes, I could have sworn my dog thing just winked at me. Oh, lightning. I cursed firmly, lighting, shocking every person in the combat suits. Get the one running away, hothead. Nodding, he tossed a blade. A soft cry poured from the guy's lips, the blade sticking out of the slim line between the helmet and the suit. Well done, hothead. A voice changer sound boomed. A tall, slender man in a black business suit sauntered in. No one has tamed that thing since I was born. Well, I'm offering for you two to come back with no punishments. My pet dog was busy eating the soldiers, the man in the red demon mask stopping inches in front of me. <sighs> Never, I spat, maniacal chuckles exploding underneath his mask then. I'm going to take you guys down. He took off his gloves, a flaming skeleton hand warming my face. My breath hitched as he aimed it towards my heart. Hothead grabbed me, holding the little dog thing. The man cursed as the door shut behind us. Who was that? He barked, passing me the dog. What are you going to do with this? Looking down at my chest, a burn mark in the shape of his hand looked red against my pale skin. Then my father rushed in a snarl curling on his lips. Oh, you're lucky he did touch you, he snapped, hovering his hand over the burn. One touch and you die. His code name is Mr. Death. Why did you bring that thing here that you were meant to kill? Concern flashed across his face, the wound not healing. 
my eyebrows furrowed, my teeth chewing instinctively on the inside of my cheek. His name's Ferguson, and he's my spirit animal now, I growled, standing to my feet. I want to be left alone for a while. Yes, that means you too. Oh, come along with me, my little Fergie. His little paws plodded after me to the roof of the building. The moon shone down on me, Fergie resting on my chest. Sweet slumber then wrapped me in her arms, exhaustion winning over. Part 7 The tile shifted next to me, my partner clinging on for dear life, chuckling to myself, personally knowing that his biggest fear was height. Oh, he looks so adorable, shaking like a leaf. Wow, you must really want to talk to me if you feel as if you should face your biggest fear. I teased playfully, taking his hand. He rolled his eyes, snatching his hand back. A pregnant pause hung between us, his throat clearing. I just wanted to be next to you. He faltered oddly, a blush rising to his cheeks. I want to ask you a question. Do you... Then my sister leaped in between us, Fergie bearing his teeth in her direction. A confident grin was plastered across her face, a folder in her hand. Annoyance flickered in my eyes, the tiles shifting slightly as I stood up. Hey, little sissy, she remarked with a sarcastic tone, daggers basically being shot from her eyes. Dad has a mission for us specifically. He mumbled something about practicing your magic and he wants you to stay back to talk to him. Well, a mixture of panic and terror creased my partner's forehead, a cold sweat dripping off of his brow. She snapped her finger and we were at the red door again, swinging the key around on her finger. And then she messed with her purple hair. Hey, I never found out your name, I murmured weakly, feeling her energy dwarf mine. I can't keep calling you older sis. Please don't call me sissy, it irritates me. Chuckling to herself, she covered her lips with her hand. Shaking her head, she pulled my grey plaid skirt down. Tossing me a grey and red bow, I adjusted the buttons of my white button-up shirt. Well, I'm Amy, and unfortunately you can't tell me who you are quite yet, she replied, looking up into the sky sadly. I miss the little sissy that would raise hell with me. My cheeks flushed scarlet, her pushing the door open. Catholic school hell greeted me, my sister sliding the blazer over my shoulder. She looked like my mother in a black business blazer and tight pencil skirts, a folder now looking like a school binder. What the hell are we doing here? I whispered through gritted teeth, crushing my bow in my hand. I can't stand places like this. Her lips parted to speak, a wry looking nun running up to us. A gold cross swung over her black robes as she spoke in an animated tone to my sister. And who might you be? She queried with the world's worst fake smile, the rosary dangling in her prayer clasped hands. You must be Sally McCormick. Like the spice, I'm assuming. A mischievous look twinkled in my eyes, my sister stomping on my black boots. Yeah, I am indeed Sally, and you know what's ironic? I babbled cheerfully, making my inner soul sick with the level of sweetness. I love to beg everything and anything. Isn't that just funny? My sister shot me a thumbs up, sister whatever her name was, guiding me through the halls. All eyes fell on me, the boys adjusting themselves as their girlfriend slapped them. Oh, great. I was hated from the moment I walked through the door. A simple wooden door with peeling white letters that read office, the hinges crying out in pain as she opened it. Welcome to St. Thomas's Prep, where we teach math and the lessons of God, she boasted, watching me with judgmental eyes. Here's your schedule, and don't forget worship is right after lunch. A brown leather backpack was then shoved into my face, Amy pulling me into her classroom. Of course she would come off as kind and judgmental at the same time. People like her really steamed me. You're here to sniff out the vampires and their killers, she explained, 
pointing to the paper on her desk as Sister What's-Her-Name glared at her. We need to stop the killer. Cocking my brow, a bemused smile dawned on her face. Yeah, you sure it isn't Sister whatever her name is? I questioned, gripping the leather strap of my backpack tighter. And how in the hell am I going to do that? Resting her hands on her hips, she shoved me into the sea of buzzing teenagers. Scanning the hall, couples were practically having sex on their lockers, and nerds smashing through people to be the first to the next class. A tap on my shoulder snapped me out of my trance, though. A short five-foot girl with short, black, shoulder-length hair staring up at me. Hi, I'm Susie Parker, your school guide today. She stammered this awkwardly, her lack of confidence irking me even more. You are very pretty. A gentle blush flushed my cheeks, my schedule floating to the ground. Uh, thanks, I stuttered oddly, never hearing those words before in my life. Uh, you're pretty too. Her green eyes glittered up at me, my schedule trembling in her hands. Her gaze fell on the one blue mark glowing on my arm, the magic in my body picking something up. I was wondering if you wanted to hang out with me after school, she queried anxiously, tucking a piece of hair behind her ear. I have to show some of the artwork I do. Smiling warmly, I nodded in her direction. Something was off about her, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. The classes dragged on, reminding me why I strongly disliked school in the first place. Oh, shit, it was after lunch, time for worship. The youthful priest in the black shirt with the white plastic collar was reading enthusiastically from the Bible. Students' heads bowed down. Perhaps it was my imagination, but the priest's eyes flashed red for a moment when our eyes met. Bingo. He was our vampire leader. Oh, well, that's kind of ironic, I thought to myself. Come, child of God, he called out to me, his arms reaching out. Let the Lord bathe you in the golden rays of heaven. Now whispers passed between the students, a fake smile plastered on my face as I marched up to him. Making me kneel, he held the back of my neck tightly. Everyone said amen, leaving just us too. The vein bulging in the middle of his forehead kindly informed me that he was rather pissed at me. How dare your father send you to me, he chastised, waving his hands. I've been following the rules. We have our own issues. His fingers were wrapped around my neck, my foot smashing him into the pews. Dude, if you let me speak, I growled through gritted teeth, then you'd know that we're not here for you. Well, we kind of are. Hey, I'm here to catch your hunter. Nice cover, though. Struggling to stand, his body collapsed into the pews. His muscles relaxed, a fresh bout of concern almost aging him. The chapel door then burst open, and my purple-haired sister marched up to him. Her fist raised in the air, my fingers wrapping around her arm. Lowering her fist, a sharp glower met me. He hurt you, she whined childishly, probably losing her only chance to save her little sister. Did you find anything? Flashing back to weirdo Susie Parker, my lips parted to speak. The girl herself walked in. Oh, there you are, she mused, picking up my backpack. Let's get you to the rest of your classes so we can hang out later. Amy gave me the call signal, allowing the short freak to drag me out of there. Once again, classes dragged on, the teachers and students choosing to ignore me. A relief washed over me, the final bell ringing. Rushing to meet my sister, Susie cut me off. Oh, I just have to check in with my sister, I uttered nervously, rubbing the back of my neck. I'm living with her as long as I'm here. You understand, right? Shaking her head, urgency was burned in her eyes. Well, normally, but... Well, I would. There's something wrong with our priest, she whispered in my ears, claws growing from her fingers. Oh, and um, the society says hi... Meekness turned into a rotten smile then, her eyes glowing red. Leaping away from her, my eyes looked for my backpack. 
and a rotten stench wafted up my nose, making the room spin around. And cold marble met my face, darkness enveloping me. A bright light blinded me, the priest sitting next to me tied up. A rusty light swung above my head, the bowl flickering aggressively. Susie sauntered in, the black corset hugging her petite body. A seductive red painted on her lips, black eyeshadow highlighting her eyes. And if haughty was a word, her picture would be next to it. Where was Amy when I actually needed her? You have been procured by the Black Widow, sister of Mr. Death. She gloated waving her poisoned blade around. I am going to eat you now. And the priest jerked awake, the web-like binding attempting to squeeze him into tiny little pieces. Why hadn't she bowed me? I wondered to myself as blue energy formed in my palm. Aiming it at the lovely vampire priest, the webbing disintegrated, him shooting an appreciative smile. Oh, his fangs glistened in the light, Tears swimming in his eyes. Sharp spikes stuck out of his skin, black poison dyeing his veins. Leaping to my feet, the brown leather backpack in the corner caught my eye. My bare feet pounded to my backpack, the wall next to it exploding. Rocks rained down around me, Amy standing confidently with an aura of blue energy. Let my sissy go, she yelled ferociously, tossing me the backpack. Black Widow, my dearest nemesis. Two blades made of pure blue energy sat in her palms, my eyes scanning the items in the bag. Two vials of purple antidote shimmered in the light, a needle sitting next to it. Sprinting over to the vampire priest, I ripped out the spikes one by one. His breathing had grown shallow, my trembling hand filling the needle. His skin popped as the needle sank into him the purple liquid flowing into his neck. Relief washed over me, the priest falling asleep as his wounds healed. Hot breath bathed the back of my neck, Black Widow's rotten breath nauseating me. Shocks of pain shot through me, her blade sticking out of my stomach. Inky poison dyed my veins black, blood pouring from my eyes. The blood blurred my vision, and my now lifeless sister was laying on the rocky floor of the cave. Ripping the blade out of my stomach, blood splattered on the ground. And fear gripped her eyes for the first time. My agility had not been affected. Turning to run from me, I leapt behind her. Now cowering in terror, a sea of red eyes and fangs burst into the room. The vampire priest snapped the blade in half, Amy stirring on the ground. The adrenaline faded away, and the world spun around me. Voices faded in and out, lips moving but no words reaching my ear. Amy's face hung above me, tears raining onto mine. I'm sorry, I slurred like a drunk, darkness now bathing me. Part 8 can you stop killing yourself? Hothead barked in my face as I woke up to bright lights, tears swimming in his eyes. Why do you keep putting yourself in danger when you know it'll probably not end well? Uh, and you? Rage seethed through his gritted teeth, his intense glare falling on Amy. What? She snapped with an annoyed look in her eyes. She did what she had to do. You are just a possessive ass whose codename actually matches your personality. Besides, I gave her the antidote as quickly as I could. Shove the fuck off. Her purple hair swung around her pale face, her t-shirt and jeans covered in a bunch of paint. Sauntering away, she left us alone, a dull, throbbing pain stabbing my side as I sat up. Well, we have another job for you two, my father ordered, tossing us a black folder. This one should be easier than the last one. A simple hunt and kill. And one last thing, keep the leader alive. You might have the location of your memories. Hothead's lips parted to speak, my fingers wrapping around him, stopping them from running his damn mouth away. Shoving his hands in his navy blue Italian suit, 
my father walked out of the white room. Waving my hand, the folder opened to a long page of complaints. A lump formed in my throat. The mission was dealing with a bunch of banshees. God damn it. Banshees were the biggest pain in the ass. More importantly, why were they here in the United States? Oh, let's go, I grumbled, looking in dismay at the school uniform on me. First, I need a different outfit. This just reminds me of the torture of those damn school days. A crooked grin danced across my partner's face, a tight black sweater dress swaying in his hands. Locking my brow, I snatched it from him. The school uniform couldn't be ripped off fast enough, though, the soft wool feeling nice against my clammy skin. A blush rose to his cheeks, the dress, like all the others, clinging to my hourglass figure. Looking away sheepishly, he slid on my worn combat boots. Nothing was said between us, my hand twisting my hair into a detailed side bun. Leaping to my feet, we walked to the white door. A pink cookie hung awkwardly between my sister's painted lips, the brown backpack and red key swinging in her hands. Good luck, little sissy, she exclaimed jovially, cupping my hands. Now you got this. Remember to use your lightning powers. They're electrifying. Please make sure she comes back in one piece or I will end you. His brows furrowed, disbelief burning in his eyes. A sigh of disgust tumbled from his lips, his hand rubbing the back of his neck. Words were sitting on the tip of his tongue, a sly grin dancing across his face. Well, at least she hardly gets hurt with me, he snapped back, his voice rich with sarcasm. I won't let her do anything stupid. Amy's brow cocked, her black boots turning towards him. Oh, like you're any better, she growled through gritted teeth. You were the one who trapped her in the first place and got her into this mess. At this, his fists clenched tightly, his temper rising hotter than a summer's day. The red door appeared, relief washing over me. The key slid into the lock, the door swinging open. Chuckling nervously, I pulled on his arm. Hey, uh, the door is open. We should go, I stammered, Fergie hopping onto my shoulder. Come along, my dear. Before you say something, you'll regret. Groaning in protest, he shut the door behind him. Empty woods suffocated me, the endless sea of dead trees spreading all around us. Judging by the leaves, we must be in Maine. A shrill scream rang out around us, fog curling at my boots. Something was controlling the banshees, hothead passing me a pair of headphones as blood dripped from my ears. Placing them on my ears... Sweet relief washed over me. Silence never felt so nice. A dozen women in yellow-aged rags floated off of the ground, tears falling from their eyes. Ratty hair floated around their ghostly white faces, golden eyes glaring in our direction. Shifting through the bag, I pulled out a black iron nail. Stomping it into the ground, blue energy boiled up in my palms. Touching the metal... My lips parted to speak. A blur of black knocked me to the ground then. An elderly woman with dry white hair and liver-spotted skin hung over my face. Nausea racked my body, my lack of breakfast seeming rather wise at this point as rotten teeth rained down on me. You look just like your mother, the old bat crooned, cackling as her black wool robe fell heavy against my body. I am the spirit mother, ruler of the banshees. I have orders from the top of your society to take you in alive. Fergie leapt off of my shoulder, growing bigger than he ever had. His tail wagged with delight, his mouth swallowing half of her banshees in one go. Hothead then lunged at her, her ancient body cracking with each roll. Taking my chance, blue lightning crackled around my fingers, Touching the black iron nail, a sea of lightning coated the forest floor. The banshees screeched, loud enough for my headphones to not work. A ringing shot through my brain, the spirit mother slamming her boot into my chest. 
cracks echoed in the still night, my ribs fracturing slightly as my body slammed into a pile of rocks. A soft crunch alerted me, the back of my head growing wet with a warm liquid. Curiosity got the best of me, my finger pressing the soft spot on the back of my head. A snarl curled on my lips, my brows cocking in frustration at the sight of a red finger. Surprise illuminated my face, blue lightning mixing with my blood. Blue curved blade sat in my palm, a sly grin dancing across my face. Maniacal laughter exploded from my lips, my partner and the ancient witch turning towards me. Fear burned in her eyes then for the first time, lightning crackling around my blade. An idea came to me, just hoping that it would work. A bolt of lightning, I shouted with glee, slamming the blade into the ground. Childlike wonder twinkled in my eyes, the lightning crashing towards the spirit mother. Her boots pounded against the ground, the lightning obliterating her. The hothead's jaw dropped to the ground, a dark energy turning the small celebration into a shit show. General Smith rushed in. Mr. Death standing next to him. Flames licked his skeletal hands, chills running up my spine. My eyes fell on the scar from the last time we'd met. You two are a pain in our ass. The robotic voice of the voice changer groaned, the man in the business suit rushing towards me. Time for me to take you alive, much to my dismay. Shaking my head, my blade doubled inside. Rolling his eyes, a long red staff appeared in his hands. Sparks flew around us, lightning striking the ground everywhere. If you think that I'll let you leave alive this time, you are wrong. I threatened icily, his strength throwing me back into a birch tree. My body ached as I stood to my feet, his face inches from mine now. Lightning shot from my blade, slamming into his chest. Black smoke curled from it, a gaping hole closing up instantly. Panic gripped my body, the red door appearing twenty yards from us. Hothead was killing agents right and left when icy breath suddenly bathed my face. I am not human, he explained, shooting me a wild look. I am a spirit controlled by my master. Point is that you need to kill him in order to kill me. And that, my dear friend, is where your stupid memories are. Let me ask you this. Do you want to lose what you have with him? The moment you place that memory cartilage in your neck, you'll forget everything that happened. Realizing that I could not win the battle, I snapped my finger. Fergie plodded over to me, his paws wrapping around my leg. Silent tears streamed from my face, his head. Silent tears streamed from my face, his paw burning through my leg. An inky blackness crept up it, Fergie tossing me onto his back. Let's get Hothead out of here, I half wheezed, half shouted, wincing in pain. He then bounded towards my partner, my arms pulling him up. Air rushed around my face, his eyes falling on my leg. Fergie shrank down to his scotty dog size at the door, my fingers trembling as Hothead shoved the key into the lock. A gentle click rang in my ears, my body collapsing into his arms. The room spun around me, my father screaming words I couldn't quite hear. <sighs> Sleep, my father's voice ordered, a sweet slumber wrapping her arms around me once more. I was floating over a bleak landscape. The sign read Las Vegas. My body stopped in front of an abandoned hotel, the peeling boards slopping. Alarm widened my eyes as Mr. Death stepped out of the rotting wooden door. His eyes met mine, a curious smile dancing across his face. I see you, he taunted coolly. My heart sank into my stomach, the scene melting away. With that, the beeps of an alarm rang in my ears my father blowing blue sand into my face. Darkness bathed me, slumber winning the battle once again.
Part 9 A scream of frustration exploded from my lips, a stump sitting where my leg used to be. Cold sweat dripped off of my brow, the beeping of the heartbeat machine going nuts. Silent tears streamed down my cheeks, another scream exploding from my lips. Where's my leg? I demanded shrilly, picking this time to lose my cool. What the hell's going on here? A panic attack tightened my chest, blood dripping from the corner of my lip. Hothead rushed to my side, his hands pushing me down. My teeth sank into his arm, small lines of blood dotting his skin as he let go. Leaping off of the bed, cracked pavement smacked my face. Shit, I forgot I didn't have a leg. My partner swung me over his shoulder, my fist smashing against his back. Ah, calm down, damn it, he shouted over my cries of anger, slamming me back down on the bed. His handsome face was now inches from mine, a gentle smile relaxing me. Grimace darkened my father's face, though, a blue glowing prosthetic in his hand. Ah, death's touch rotted your leg, so we had to cut it off before his power devoured your entire body he explained, holding his hands up to protect his face. This'll be your new leg. Ah, this'll be painful as it combines with your body. Once attached, it'll sync up with your body and you'll never be able to remove it. You understand? Without warning, the top of the prosthetic attached itself to me. Writhing in pain, lightning shot everywhere. People ducked behind a protective barrier, the screams of anguish flying from my lips. Hours seemed to pass, although I was told it was only a few minutes, before I could relax on the table. Sweat drenched my skin, my bangs clinging to my forehead. Hothead approached me with his hand out, the metal foot touching the floor. Relief washed over me, my foot stepping forward as if it had always been there. I need the key, I blurted out weakly, nearly falling flat on my face. There's an abandoned hotel in Las Vegas that Mr. Death was walking into. Our memories might be there. Can I go? A stern gaze fell my way, hot head shaking his head. My lips parted in protest, my father tossing me the key. I'll go and be quick, he warned, tossing me also a pair of black leggings and a black band shirt. I'll have something better for you when you get back, but if you don't come back in an hour, I'll find you myself. Oh, also, Amy is coming with you. Hothead groaned audibly at this, Amy glaring daggers in his direction. I'll make sure she comes back in one piece, she promised our father, shoving Hothead out of the way. Let the lady get dressed in privacy. His arms crossed across his fresh business suit, his face seething with a mixture of envy and anger. Turning away, I tossed the smelly hospital gown to the floor. The cotton felt rough on my skin, the shirt hugging my figure. The leggings itched, and a red door appeared in front of us once more. Taking a second to gather myself, my foot slid into my combat boots. Click. The door swung open to reveal an abandoned hotel. Stepping over the threshold, dry humid heat dried out our lungs instantly. Caution was the word to describe us. The leather of the brown backpack creaking as she gripped it tightly. Or well, she could sense it too. Black energy curled off of the building, my sister suddenly getting tossed into the desert. Sand flew around her, the bag thudding to my feet. Blue energy formed in my curved blade then, lightning bouncing off of my skin. I see, you came to the meeting I set up. An icy woman's voice mused curiously, a tall slender woman with a red mask stepping out of the hotel. I am the leader of the society. A witch myself. I come from your world and want to destroy this one. And let's just say I want to start all over again. Do you want to join us once more? This is your final chance. Then Mr. Death sauntered up next to her, his staff in his hand. I refuse, I spat, my spit hitting her red boots. We'll take you down and get our memories back. A wide grin spread across her cheeks, her hands dusting off her suit. Shaking her head in disbelief, a black gun glimmered in the hot sun. Leave now, my sister screamed at us, 
banging at the invisible force field around us. We can get out of here with our lives if we go now. It wasn't that I didn't disagree with her, but the key had stopped glowing red. A sly grin danced across the white-haired woman's face, a childish pout dawning on her painted lips. I am Madame Death, the only witch to master all of the elements, she bragged obnoxiously, raising her hand. Attack and kill them, Mr. Death. Lunging at me, Hothead held his hand up. A black energy force field formed around us, a pleasant surprise illuminating my eyes. Gazing down at me, black balls of pure energy shot at him. Leaping out of his force field, my sister cried out as my blade clashed against her gun. Some black goop dripped on my foot, the weapon turning into a carbon copy of mine. Her head cocked, her long white hair cascading halfway down her body. Her foot slammed into my stomach, and the beginnings of internal bleeding started. A sly grin danced across my face, though, her force field faltering enough for Amy to burst in. Lightning shot from my blade and into her stomach, a large hole smoking. At this, maniacal laughter exploded from her lips, her black-gloved hand picking me up by the throat. Fear widened her eyes, black energy blasting towards her. Lightning, I yelled, tossing it into his attack. Childlike wonder widened my eyes, lightning combining with the pure energy. Blue lightning burst through her body, her skin melting away. Unnatural howls poured from her lips, her legs burning. Ah, sweet revenge. Then Mr. Death lunged at us the weakest he had ever been. Loose dirt crumbled beneath her fingers, her breath growing shallow. Flipping around, my blade slammed into her heart. Thunderstorm, I called out, the extra lightning flying to my blade. Are you ready to die? Her crazed eyes met mine, her trembling hands ripping off her mask. Hot vomit threatened to fly at my throat, rotten tissue falling off her face. His hand was now inches from my face, all of the lightning flying into her body. Panic gripped my mind. His hand was disintegrating in front of my very eyes. There will be another one just like me, she wheezed, her body turning into black ash. Society will always live. A hot breeze blew her away, the rotting hotel door swinging violently behind her. Exhaustion hung heavily on my eyes, my fingers wrapping around the brown knob. Amy and Hothead followed me in, empty shelves greeting us. A yellowed map fluttered on the floor, a bunch of boots crashing in behind us. Drop your weapons, General Smith ordered roughly, smoothing his black business suit. You are now talking to the new leader of the society. I'll make you pay for killing my wife. A snarl curled on his lips, bullets flying in our direction. Dismay dimmed my eyes. The key had still not lit up. Scattering all around, Hothead cried as a bullet slammed into his shoulder. A sharp thump echoed in the decaying building, his body slumping forward. Relief washed over me, though. However, that soon faded to horror, because behind it was General Smith. Amy stood up next to me, her body getting riddled by bullets. Shooting me one last smile, she tossed me the bag. Go on, little sissy, she wept, tears of sorrow flooding from her eyes. God, I wish I was there for your returned memories. Then Hothead dragged me to the door, tears welling up in my eyes too. Scrambling around, he guided my hand to put the key in the lock. Click, and the door swung open. Blue energy blasted us through, falling to my knees thereafter. Raw emotion cracked my voice, a scream of anguish exploding from my lips. Sobs racked my body, her locket dangling off the left strap of the bag with a note. My trembling fingers ripped it open. The writing was chaotic. Dear little sissy, I've loved you from the moment you were born, and will meet you again in the heavens reserved for us witches. I hope you and Hothead have a family and recover your memories. Whenever you get sad, 
or my locket to your chest. Our mother gave it to me, and lastly, I promise to call you little sissy when I see you again. Love, Amy, your best sister ever. Large, salty tears soaked the page, my father approaching us with a look of concern on his face. One look at my face and the distressed look on Hothead's face, and he knew instantly. Smashing his fist into the wall, concrete showered the floor at his feet. Fury now boiled in his veins, nothing being said towards us. Simply walking away, he left me to wallow in my sea of tears. Part 10 I had had enough of this cat and mouse game, and it needed to end. My eyes scanned a map of possible locations for the headquarters of my enemies. They'd taken away my sister, and they had to pay. Rumbling to myself, my hand pressed against the paper. Blue lightning shot from my hand to a black dot mere miles away from us. Creeping around, my father slumbered with an empty bottle in his palm. Taking the key from his desk, my nimble hands packed a bag full of supplies for a couple of weeks. Hothead popped up behind me, holding his own bag. A wide grin was plastered on his face, but his eyes were puffy from crying. Hey, you really think I'd let my partner go by herself? He teased softly, nuzzling his head into my neck. Let's end all of this. Turning my head back, my father was running towards us now. The red door appeared, Fergie hopping onto my shoulder. Bye, father, I whispered, hot head pulling me through the door. I'll be back as soon as possible, and hopefully with my memories. His drunken face was the last thing I saw before the door slammed shut. Black energy surrounded an all-glass factory, my eyes counting a total of thirteen floors. Guards in ordinary green uniforms guarded the front door. Fergie whining in my ear. Cold sweat was dripping off my brow. A female soldier standing over us. The butt of her gun slammed into our heads, and darkness bathed me. A single white light bulb swung above us, black iron chains wrapped around us. Throbbing migraine plagued my brain, hothead passing me one of my special nails. Shaking my head, he wrapped my fingers around it. I don't know why you didn't tell me that you had powers. I'm a little peeved with your dumbass. I chided him quietly, slamming the nail into the ground. Hey, uh, this is going to hurt a bit. Sweat drenched my forehead, a spark of lightning bouncing around my hand. Then a blue shockwave shook the ground, electrical pain jolting through both of our bodies as the chains dropped to the cold black marble floor. Of course, the noise alerted some guards outside, our powers null and void for just a few minutes. Kicking up a loose rock, the light bulb smashed. Sweet darkness then bathed us, the guards mumbling to themselves as they rushed in. Come out, come out, wherever you are, a female voice teased playfully, her gun mere inches from my face. I know you're in here somewhere. There's no... A scream of frustration exploded from her lips, her temper now growing unhinged. Nodding to Hothead, we skirted around the room to the door. A sly grin danced on my face, her eyes now meeting mine the moment the door slammed shut behind us. Clicking the lock, they were taken care of. Looking around, the number six was flashing on the elevator button above it. More guards, however, were shifting behind the door, the alarm widening my eyes. Well, there has to be at least twenty of them, he informed me, pulling me into an unlocked janitor's closet. We need a better plan, or we'll get creamed. Crossing my arms, I walked out to greet the fellow soldiers. Hey, don't you guys want your memories back? I pitched anxiously, praying that they would take the bait. Feel the back of your neck. Well, they all felt the back of their necks, their guns resting by their sides. The captain of the group took off his mask a worn face greeting mine. Kind eyes gazed back at me, a small smile lighting up his face. Here, yeah, take our uniforms and we'll knock each other out, he replied with a matter-of-fact tone, 
passing me his helmet. The only floor we don't know anything about is floor 13. Unfortunately, you'll need a special pass for that. Promise me that you'll replace all of our memories, yeah? Okay, ready, boys. Well, the uniform fits snugly. The helmet just a tad too big. Hothead was already in his uniform, his eyes meeting mine as we pushed the elevator button to floor 13. Cheesy music echoed in the small space, each ding meaning another floor. He, um, I love you, and uh, if anything happens to me, uh, he began, my touch stopping him mid-sentence. Shaking my head, the metal doors opened to a white, sterile hallway with many black doors. A scientist rushed up to us, her red glasses resting at the tip of her nose. Hey, uh, did you subdue the threats? She asked sweetly, holding a clipboard closely to her chest. I certainly hope so. They're about to destroy everyone's memories to protect us all. A gasp of alarm echoed in my helmet, Hothead grabbing her access card without her noticing. She sauntered off in the opposite direction, the halls feeling rather endless at this point. Corner after corner we turned until the door with memories above it was swinging open violently. Ripping off our armor, we sprinted into an immense room with three wall-sized monitors. Walls of buttons lined the sides of the computer, a voice yelling at me. You need to hide and get all the memories. Give them to the soldiers, I ordered him firmly, ignoring the intense protest in his eyes. Please, we'll meet again soon. He sprinted off into the next room, General Smith now standing in front of me. Well, the chills ran up my spine, evil laughter tumbling from his lips. I see you finally joined the party. He gloated cruelly, a sneer curling on his mouth. I think you should join us and forget about everything. My large blue blade sat in my palm, lightning bouncing off of my body. Raising my blade above the first computer, his face paled slightly. I'll break this if you don't listen to my request, I threatened, electrical pain jolting my body. Then you'll have nothing, like how you don't have your memories. Chuckling to himself, black lightning bouncing off of him. Blood poured from his eyes, red liquid pouring from his nose, and cracks lined his skin, a black blade sitting in his palm. But I destroyed them already. He informed me with a childish smile. Go ahead, do it, I don't care. I was going to destroy the facility anyways. In fact, there are bombs all over this building. I plan on escaping with my life. I simply can't thank you enough for destroying Madame Death. Oh well, too bad it's time for you to die. And with that black lightning shot in my direction, his face inches from mine. Blood spurted from my shoulder his blade slicing through. Muscles spasmed, black lightning attempting to cook my body from the inside. Kicking him off of me, hot blood soaked my white cotton summer dress. Lunging at me once more, sparks snowed around me as our blades clashed violently. Black smoke curled behind me, orange flames licking at the computers. Hothead was dashing by the window with a cart full of metal boxes, determination on his face. A squishing sound alerted me to the general sliding down my blade, clouded eyes meeting mine. Great. He was dead, but something was off. The black marble below my feet cracked, Fergie growing as big as he could. A glowing red hole opened up, various creatures climbing out of it. Oh shit, I had to seal that damn hole to hell. How'd I manage that? The scientist from before tapped my back holding a red button, urgency in her eyes. Shaking the general off of my blade, she slapped the red button. Red lights blinded me, a shrill alarm causing my ears to bleed. That will seal them shut, but I need a bit of your lightning to seal it, she explained in a monotone voice. Then we need to get out of here. Monsters dashed by me her hand gripping my arm. My blue lightning grew more chaotic, the white light coming from the hole absorbing it. Black liquid bubbled to the top, creatures still stuck there. Blue meat greeted me, 
my blade now cutting the stuck ones in half. Horror gripped me. The scientist who had aided me was being chewed on by a blob of human flesh. Blood oozed beneath her head, Fergie devouring every creature in her sight. Unnatural screeches exploded from the blob, my lightning burning it to a crisp. Well, no time to feel sorry for her. Run! She wheezed, her eyes rolling into the back of her head. She didn't have to tell me twice. Sprinting down the hall, the blood loss was beginning to affect me. The walls spun around me, my footing growing unsure. A wall of bunnies blocked me from escaping, all of them flying at me all at once. A blur of fur and sharp teeth covered my view, rendering my attacks useless. Then teeth sank into my skin, black energy blasting them off of me. Hothead gazed down at me, his hand pulling me up. At this point I should have been bathed in blood because the red stuff coated me from top to bottom. Well, let's get out of here, he barked, dragging me along. We'll hunt down these creatures later. Blasting every creature out of the way, relief washed over me. The early morning sun bathed me, glass and dust blasting in our direction as the building crashed down into a mangled pile of metal. Dazed soldiers sat all around us, the guy who'd helped us putting people's memories back into their necks. Yeah, do you want your memories back? He asked briskly, eyeing the other soldiers. You'll forget everything that you've experienced up to this point except for any deaths. What do you two want? Hothead turned to me, taking my hand. Well, I, um, hope to fall in love with you again, he whispered sweetly into my ear, the soldier sliding his memories into his neck. A blank look flashed in his eyes, tears swelling in mine. Confusion twisted his features. What romance we'd had was melting away. Tears streamed from my eyes, the captain sliding in my memories. Nothing happened. Cold metal meeting the tips of my finger. Why didn't anything happen? I whined pathetically, a snarl growing on my lips. Now I'll never remember my name or my childhood. The captain shifted uncomfortably, a light bulb basically appearing over his head. Snapping his fingers, he gave me a file. They must have only taken the names and childhood memories away from you, he informed me, walking over to another group of soldiers. My trembling hands opened the folder, a beautiful name flashing up at me. My name is Marie Bleu. My father's name isn't listed. I mumbled to myself, a pile of photos falling to my lap. Wait, is that Hothead? A strong hand tapped my shoulder, a toothy grin greeting me. Who's Hothead? My partner queried happily, spinning me around. I am Javier LaRue, your childhood friend. Don't you remember your childhood at all? Shaking my head, he picked me up off the ground, pressing his lips against mine. Spinning me around again, Fergie plopped down in front of me, blood dripping down her fangs. Okay, Javier, would you like to hunt monsters with me? I inquired shakily, hoping he would hear me. I need a new partner. A quirky smile dawned on his face, my father then rushing towards us. His arms held me tightly, a glare shot in Javier's direction, sending chills up his spine. Hey, we have monsters to hunt, he ordered us, pulling us towards a black pickup truck. Groaning to myself, I rubbed my forehead. Another agency, basically. And I'm still doing the same shit, God damn it. Well, thanks for coming back and listening to the whole adventure. Bit of a roller coaster ride, that one. Lots of things going on. So, um, yeah, fun. Fun and games. But, uh, yeah, on to the next story, which will be probably tomorrow. I'm going to keep going on one of those um, series that I started and didn't make any progress on. So that's coming up tomorrow. Anyway, enough for this evening. A bit exhausted after a monster recording session. Couldn't get it all done yesterday due to life happening. But it's all done now. Well, till the next time, my dear friends, very, very sweet dreams. Bye-bye.
Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this story today. It really means a lot to me and to the author of the story, of course. Well, if you want to know more about me, I'm pretty much everywhere on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can download my music on SoundCloud. Um, I've got a Patreon if you feel like. Throw me a dollar or two. Very much appreciated. And of course, on Reddit, I have a place where you can leave stories if you want me to read one that you've written. Well, hoping to see you all again very soon. Till then, sweet dreams, and bye-bye.